for some praise this morning. Aren't you glad to be in his house today? Hallelujah, God. We magnify you. We glorify you. And we exalt you. Hallelujah. What a beautiful day to be in church. Amen. Won't you turn to somebody and tell them you're glad to see them today? Amen. Amen. Let's worship God. Hallelujah. Amen.
let's clap unto the Lord right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Somebody say praise the Lord. I believe God is here, and he's here on business. When he shows up, he comes to do a work. And I don't care what you stand in need of today. God is able to heal, and God is able to deliver, and God is able to touch you today. We want to go to the Lord in prayer over some special needs. We want to remember uh, Brother Jason Netheridge's grandson gave the praise report of him getting out of ICU, but he's got a whole new team of doctors, and they are meeting with those doctors today. And we just pray that God gives these doctors direction to give them uh, help to get this uh, young man whole. We remember Jennifer Williams, she's sick today. Remember Pop Mayo, uh, his legs are real swelled, and he's in a lot of pain and not doing very well today. Remember him. Jeff Long is facing cancer. Kevin Johnson and his parents are in the final stages of cancer. Remember them. Remember Margaret Russian and Catherine Howard needs prayer today. And Kristen Huggins needs cancer. So we'll remember all these needs, but I know there's plenty of other needs scattered throughout this building. Could you lift your hands if you've got a special unspoken request? Now put the other hand with it. Let's lift our hands and let's pray the prayer of faith today. God, we ask you to move. We ask you to touch. Right now, Lord, we speak healing. We speak deliverance, Lord, over every sickness, over every pain. We pray for Genevieve today. We pray for Pop today. We pray for Braxton today. We pray for Jeff Long and Kevin Johnson, Margaret Russian and Catherine Howard and Kristen Huggins. We pray a covering upon these individuals today that your healing virtue would flow even as we pray that, God, you are moving upon their behalf right now. We pray for every individual, God, under the sound of our voice gathered with us today within these four walls that you would begin to move and minister in their needs and their life and God will be sure to give you the praise and the glory and the honor in Jesus name somebody say in Jesus name in Jesus name amen let's clap unto the Lord like we believe he's hearing our prayer today hallelujah aren't you thankful for the promises of God today hallelujah amen 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 Standing on his promises, and then we have a confidence he won't fail. Thank you, Lord, for every promise that you make. Lord, he will go before. He will go before us, and He will be with us. He will not fail us. He will not forsake us. So this is what we do say. Trust in the Lord with all. Come on. 
Jesus made. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody needs to believe the word of God today. Come on, you need to believe in God today. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. We trust you right now. The impossible becomes possible in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Cancer is just another word to God. It's not impossible for God. Your situation is not impossible to God. Woo. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. Anything that God has ever been, He is still today. He cannot change. Bible says Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. So whatever he's been, he will be. And if he was a healer in the Bible, guess what? Today, he's a healer. If he was a way maker, if he was the one that parted the seas and let the children of Israel go across, you know what? Today, he can part things. He can make a way where you didn't think there was going to be a way. You can walk through and not even realize, I don't know how it happened. I just know God done it. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost this morning. Hallelujah. If he can shut the mouths of lions in the Bible, guess what today? He can shut the mouths of lions that's coming against you and your family. He can cast out demons in the Bible. Guess what? He can, he can come against spirits that are attacking your home today. Because whatever he's been, he will still be today. Hallelujah. I don't know what you came in struggling with. Amen. But my Bible says all things work together. All things. All things are possible. It's what my Bible says. All things, every sickness, every disease, every hurt, every situation, things that you don't even know how, how it can be, you don't even know if it can be fixed. I'm telling you today, there's a God that can fix it. There's a God that can turn it. You may feel hopeless and helpless, and you may feel like there's no, no way. There's no way, but I'm telling you, there is a way today. Amen. There is a God that stepped into this place. There's a God of glory that stepped into you, this place this morning and said, you know what? The way maker has stepped in it. We're fixing to sing that, but I feel the Holy Ghost right now. You need to believe what I'm telling you today, not because I'm, tell, I'm telling you what the Holy Ghost is. There's a way maker today for you today. Somebody said, today God can do it. Right now, I believe that God can do it. I believe he can do it. Hallelujah. Let's lift our hands and love him right now. God, you're here. God, you're here today. God, you cannot lie. Hallelujah. What you said in your word, God, we stand on your word today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
never stop, never stop oh, working. Yeah, yeah. this place. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, we believe your word today. We stand on your promises, God, and we're trusting you. God, we know that you're ordering our steps. God, we're not going to lean to our own understanding. God, we're going to trust you. God, we believe you're doing a work this morning. We thank you for your presence. God, we thank you for your love that looks past our failures and our mistakes. God, we're thankful for that grace that you make so amazing to us. And God, we're thankful for mercy that you make new every morning. And God, we love you today. God, we love you today. Come on, can we tell him, God, we love you today. Come on, we let him know right now, we love you today, Jesus. Hallelujah, now let's let him know. Hallelujah, let's give him a hand clap of praise. Aren't you thankful for the presence of God today? Hallelujah. It's a wonderful thing being in the presence of God Almighty. And I don't want us to take it for granted. I don't want us just to go through the motions because it's what we're supposed to do. But let us realize when God shows up, he shows up on purpose and with business. Amen. Such an honor to have each and every one of you here today scattered throughout this crowd. See many here today, our guests. Good to see Amber. Good to see Mr. Helms with us today. Good to see Sister Rebecca with us today. Let's give each and every one a hand clap. Amen. We're going to be dismissed for our classes at this time. Amplify students meeting in the student center. Uh, the rest of the classes are as normal in the back. And one of our very own, Brother Summer, going to come teach the adult class today. And we're looking forward to hearing the word of God come from Brother Summer. Come on, Brother Summer. God bless you. Lord, church. Oh, what a sweet presence that we feel in the house of the Lord. You know, we can, we can go a lot of places and do a lot of things and be among a lot of people. But there's nothing no sweeter being in the house of God with the people of God, feeling the presence of God. Because there's a healing that goes forth from the, the worship and the word of God. There's a healing. There's a massaging of the heart of the Holy Ghost. Something that we can't get away from. Something that we can't, we can't, you, you can run from it. You can hide from it. But if you'll stay here long enough, it'll get a hold of you, brother. It, it'll change. It'll make you a better person, better than you ever wanted to be. Yes. I'm so honored to be able to be here today and to be before such a wonderful group of people. I give honor to our pastor and to Brother, to Brother Mayo Sr. and to uh, all that are in the house today. What a wonderful group of people you are. You, yes. you just don't realize the impact that you have on each other. By, by your worship and by your, by your, just like last Sunday night as we begin to go around and to pray for one another and the Spirit of God was moving so richly. Yeah. We, we, we strengthen one another. We build one another. 
uh, and it's so good to be in the house of God and, and to worship with you, such a wonderful group of folks. Today, I'd like to share a few thoughts that I feel the Lord has laid upon my heart and uh, in a way that I may help us all, that, that, that God would move and use us. And my prayer in the, the last several days is, God, how can I draw closer to you? And, and, and no doubt the, the teaching on Wednesday night and, and, and the teachings that I've heard of years gone by on holiness and what anointed preaching that we have heard over this pulpit in the last few weeks and months, you know, from, from, from every man, that, every person that stepped behind this pulpit, the anointing has just flowed. It's just, it's just like God's got it in order. It, by ordering it day by day as we begin to yield more and as, as we as individuals begin to yield more to God. And, and that's, that's what I'm saying in, in, in the beginning of what I'm trying to say about drawing closer to God. As we begin to draw closer to God, yeah. as we begin to yield more to Him, as we begin to, to put away some things that we need to put away, you know, set, set, setting some things aside, not necessarily that they're, they're in gross sin or, in, or, or, or out of the way of God, but there's some things that we could do without. There's some things that we could, we could set aside to spend a little more time with God. Help us, help, help me, God. That's, that's been my prayer. Help me, God, to know those things that I can set aside. I, the, fishing hunting nothing wrong with it some some social media nothing wrong with it but is there some things in this area that I could spend a little more time with God because if I spend more time with God he'll make time for those other things but the key is what putting him first Am I letting other things crowd my time with God? Am I letting other things, Brother Stanford, take precedence over the time that I should be spending with God? How, how, do I, how do I begin to walk like Him? How do I begin to talk like Him? How can I become more like Jesus? That when Brother, I've got it later in my notes, Brother T.W. Barnes. I've read several of his books. A man of God, if there ever was one. Prayed and sought God daily, was used of him mightily in healings and miracles and signs and wonders and the preaching of the gospel and the souls being saved. No doubt he had done his daily routine before going out of the house. He had prayed, he had sought God and 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 just had sought as we should seek thy will be done not knowing the the things that laid ahead of him in that day and in and, and the events of life that would happen little did he know he meets a man walking down the street and he shakes the man's hand he greets him he talks to him for just a minute don't talk about the gospel don't talk about healing don't talk about anything of the sort Little did Brother Barnes know that the man was sick. Later in the day, he sees the same man. And the man comes to him and he says, I don't know what happened, brother. But after I shook your hand this morning, I was sick. But I'm better now. Woo! Can I get, can I get there with God? Yes, I can get there with God. But it's going to take some, it's going to take some putting away, separation, and drawing nigh to God. Help me, Lord. Help us as a people. There's people that we're around every day. There's co-workers. There's family members. There's neighbors. And yes, they're watching. But God, somehow, can you move in me? They, they know what I believe. They know where I stand. 
But somehow, God, something in me has got to, to, to be poured out into them that they would begin to call on your name, that they would begin to submit and begin to yield to you because I believe when they begin to call on that name, no matter where they are, they could be down in South Africa. They could be somewhere in Mexico. They could be somewhere across in, in, in Europe. They could be in a jail cell. But I believe with all of my heart when a soul sincerely desires and calls on the name of Jesus by faith, that that begins a, a process. That begins a walking toward God. That begins a drawing of God into that person unto him. For everybody, yes, most of us here have repented of our sins. We've been baptized in his name, filled with his spirit, with the speaking in tongues. And I'm thankful for that. But I don't want to stop here. Let my character, let my expressions, let, let, let my thoughts be as the elder, brother, the bishop here, as we've heard it all the time that I've been here. And Brother Stanford told me before I ever came here, I've never seen a, a man more conscious of wanting souls to be saved. Let me be, have a conscience that, that everything that I do, putting Jesus first, that I'm reaching for a soul and every word and every expression and every action and every phone call and every text and every email and everything that I do, let me be sold conscience because it makes a difference. When we can get that into the, to our bosom, which is being preached and taught, and the anointing that's been in the services that we've been in, God, God, let, help me put away some things. Help me to draw nigh to you and, and pray and, and fast and, and read your word. Be attentive to the preaching. Help me. Yeah. I would like to apologize for this, all this before that I've said before I get to my message, but I will not. But this is the day. This is the day. This is the day. A little joke between me and Brother Brent. This is the day. Luke 19, 9 and 10. We read about a man called Zacchaeus. A man I believe that was hungry after God. In 9 it says, in, in 19 and 9 of the book of Luke. And Jesus said unto him, this day is salvation come to this house. For so much as he also is a son of Abraham, for the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Zacchaeus was a man who was a publican. He was a tax collector. He was a rich man. Figure that. Now let that soak in just a minute. <laughs> but Zacchaeus, I believe, had a hunger in his heart to do different. Yeah. I believe uh, the Lord knows the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Nothing is hid from God. It talks about in, in different places about going into the dark places, going into the, the things away from God and thinking God doesn't see it. There's not nothing you do. There's not nothing you think that the Lord Jesus Christ doesn't know about. So the, there's nothing you're hiding from either of these men. God can reveal it to them and bring it to their attention. And, they, and through this pulpit, the preaching and the anointing comes forth to help you to get rid of those things, to help you to move those things out of your life that you may draw closer to him, that you may be more like him. Yes. Let my words and my deeds and my actions be more like Jesus. For this is the day that salvation has come unto you. This is the day Zacchaeus he, 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 no doubt he had the money. He could, have, he could have paid for somebody to sit him on the front row. But he took faith and he ran and, he, and he, he was small in stature. He couldn't see over the ground. I, I believe without a doubt he could have arranged. If he had the money that says he does, he could have arranged for a front row seat. 
But Zacchaeus said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see this man. And he runs and he climbs up a tree. And he, and he, and he looks for Jesus. Are you looking for Jesus? Are you looking for Jesus? We remember Zacchaeus, no doubt, would ever, never forget this day. No doubt we will never forget the day that, we begin, that God begin to deal with our hearts. And there are days in our lives that, that we'll never forget. Do you remember your first day of school? Do you remember when you got your driver's license? Do you remember the birth, your marriage? Do you remember your first child? There are days that will never ever be etched in our hearts, in our minds. But this is the day. I had a, a attended a church with a brother and sister who were uh, at one time, and we were talking about birthdays and celebrating birthdays. And she brought it to my attention a little different the way they celebrate at their house. She said, yes, we, we believe in celebrating birthdays, but we believe in celebrating more, even more, when we were born of the Spirit right. and filled with the Holy Ghost. Yep. And I never looked at it that way, but, right. you know, that's a, that's a day to remember. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember when God filled you with the Holy Ghost? Yeah, yeah. Do you remember where you were? Yeah. Do, you remember, do you remember those who were praying with you? Do you remember the words that was preached? Sure, almost every one of you, no doubt, would remember that. But this is the day that God has come and began to deal with hearts and lives and those who are, are, who are out, of, out of this room in, in, in different areas listening and, and believing and touching God. The day that the Lord, do you remember the day the Lord began to pull on the strings of your heart? When we first repented, when we were baptized in His name and we were filled with the Holy Ghost. This is the day. Let's look at men of old that we've heard about and how the day affected them when God said, this is the day. Remember the day, do you have no doubt that Noah can remember the day that God spoke to him and said, I'm fixing to get rid of this place. I'm, I'm, I'm going to have you build me a boat. No doubt Noah, Noah remembered this. He left everything. He left everything behind and he obeyed God. Walked after God. Abraham was like Noah. Leaving the Ur of Chaldees for a promise. For a word from God. Moses forsaking Egypt for the promise of obeying God. And bringing Israel out of Egypt. These are days to remember. This is the day. Obeying God and bringing Israel out. Moses said, this is to Passover, this is the day. Let's go see what God has for us. Moses said in Exodus 13 and 3, Moses said to the people, remember this day in which you came out of Egypt. I remember the day that I came out of Egypt. I remember the day that I laid things down and I called on the name of Jesus and I trusted him. And, and I, as at the beginning of, of my message here, I can carry you as each one of you can begin to carry us up a stair step of day after day, how God began to deal with you and begin to bless you. Because faith, you, you, you believe God, you trusted in God. And, 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 we, and we, we put our hope in something that we couldn't see. We believe God could do everything that his word said. We believe that his mercies were new every morning. We believe that he could put the sins behind us. We believe that he was the light in the darkness. Although we couldn't perceive or comprehend all of what that light was at that time. But we, we had hope. We believed. Zacchaeus was chief of the publicans. He was rich. And he, he, he could have had his way. But he sought to see Jesus. Oh, I seek to see Jesus. I want to see him. He found a way to get the attention of Jesus. 
The scripture says we've got to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. I believe that he was hungry in his heart. And Jesus knew this. God knows where you are. He knows the hunger. He knows what you desire. And he'll not withhold any good thing from you. Even though he was rich and had need of no worldly goods, there was a void in Zacchaeus' heart. And it could not be filled with riches, with houses, with boats, with, with land. It could not be filled. There's a void in the heart of those who don't know God. There's a void there, and there's only but one way to fill it. The death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Having faith. Do you remember the day that Jesus began to pull on the strings of your heart? And, and when you repented and you called and you received the Holy Ghost. When God made a promise to you and for your life. Aren't you thankful for what he did for you? This is the day. If you've not experienced the plan of salvation, there's healing there. There's deliverance there. There's hope of a better life someday to be with God. And I want to see him. I want to meet him. I want to do what he wants me to do. Even though we war against this flesh and we fight against it every day. Paul said it so well. I die daily. I die daily. I've got to wake up every morning. Sure, there's, there's, there's days, days uh, that I wake up not as in good of moods as in some days, but for the average and most part, I always wake up in a good mood. But it's according to how I approach that day. If I get up thinking this is going to be a bad day, what you going to get? A bad day. But if you'll get up thanking Jesus, thank you, Lord, that my feet was able to hit the ground. Thank you, Lord, that I was able, I'm, able, I'm able to move. And, and, of course, I'm not as old as some, but I'm beginning to feel the, the, years, the years creep on. And I, and I know the, the, the words of the elders, you know, it only gets worse. <laughs> so I hear. But I choose how I'm going to approach the day. I choose how I'm going to let the day affect me. And if I can spend a little time in prayer before I leave, it makes my day better. And there's men in the Bible that, that we study and that we see that, that chose to make their day better every day. The apostle Paul being one, and he is, as Zacchaeus, you know, he had his, his, his opportunity and time traveling down the road and the, the light shined down and the, 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 the passageway to salvation came to, to Paul. But Paul was a servant of Jesus Christ called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God. Paul wrote the book of Romans, which we're fixing to go through a few chapters in, in and out of uh, in Romans here. And, and, and Paul was reaching for, 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 for Israel. He was reaching to see Israel saved. You know, he was sent unto the Gentiles. And, and that indeed he did minister to and did a great work. But his heart longed to see Israel saved. And, and my heart and your heart should be longing to see the caterable saved. Longing to see folks in Tennessee saved. Longing to see folks in the United States saved. Longing to see folks in the world saved. Oh, let, let our hearts long to see the lost saved. Oh, if they could just feel the peace and the love and the joy and the Holy Ghost. But Paul uh, came, came of those who was promised afore by the prophets of the Holy Scriptures concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, made of the seed of David. He had power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. But Paul was reaching for the lost. And Paul, in, in verse 5 in chapter 1, said, By whom we received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name, among whom ye are the called of Jesus Christ. You are called with unholy calling. 
Each and every one of you here today, under the sound of my voice, and when the Spirit begins to move, God is calling you to a closer walk, to a, to a greater relationship, to a, to a closeness with Him, that we can be more obedient, that we may be used of Him in a greater measure in this last day than we have ever been used in our lives before. And I have often prayed, and I, Brother Holdem, and even for Brother, uh, brother the Bishop, Brother Mayo here, and for other other elders in the church that have been ministers, I have prayed for them often. Lord, let their latter years be greater than their former years. Let them see greater moves of God than they've ever seen in the, in the days before. Let God use them to a greater way than, than ever before in their ministry. Let them be used of you. Let the power of God be upon them. Let them be as Brother Tom, Tom Barnes as he walked out and he shook hands with that man and the man Brother Barnes may have felt it, Brother Barnes may have knew it, but that man didn't know it, and he was used of God to heal that man. Let it be, let, let, let it be that way with us and the elders of this church and the ministry, that they may feel the presence of God. There's homes that, that I've been in and in, in, in my work, and I'm in and out of a lot of homes, and very few of them that I just feel a shadow of peace. And, and some of these, some of these homes that I work in, the, pe the place where I have found peace, they're just, they're just good folks. They love God. They, they haven't accepted everything that God's got for them yet, but I'm believing they will. But I, but I have worked in other homes that were Holy Ghost filled, and I'm working some for Brother Smith across the highway. And Brother Smith and Sister Doris, I want to share with you, when I drive up that driveway, I feel the peace of God upon your home. I feel the love of God. I feel, I feel God's, God's presence there when I'm there. And it's so easy to be there. It's so easy to, to be in that, in that surrounding and work. It, it's so nice to be there and to feel. Because I can't always, every home that I go in, I can't always feel that. There's, there's spirits that come against me. And, and there's things that know what I stand for. And they're fighting against me in everything that I'm doing. I mean, trouble sometimes, sometimes it's, it's hard. But I feel peace. And I feel the love of God as, I, as I'm there in, in their home. And I appreciate them and what they stand for and what God's doing in their lives today. But I also appreciate what God's doing for you people. DPC, this gospel that you believe is known worldwide. And so is your faith, DPC. We don't know who sees these services, but I assure you that they are blessed to see you worship. They are blessed to see you begin to go around and the Spirit begin to move and, and, and prayer to be prayed for those that are in need. People that you don't even know things are going on in their lives and the Lord moves on you and you begin to go pray for them. The people out in this world, we don't know who's seeing us. We don't know where it's going. But I'm telling you, the gospel's being preached through DPC all across this world. The power of God, the faith of God is moving in lives and homes all across this United States and in America because we believe yeah. we believe yeah. in the holy and the righteous one of Israel the almighty God that is able to move and to work in situations where there seems to be no light where only things seem to be dark but God is beginning to move and beginning to let the anointing they may be wires and there may however that stuff feeds through there I don't know waves or whatever but I'm telling you the spirit's moving I'm telling you, the Spirit's moving. I'm encouraging you, keep on praying. Keep on fasting. Keep on calling on God. Keep on loving God. And, and let's see what God will do in these last days. Others are being affected by your worship. And we may be in a small town, but Paul told King Agrippa, this thing wasn't done in a corner. It was done wide open for everybody to see. And everybody is going to know where we stand. This gospel is going to live. It's, you're making a difference, DPC. And God is using you, whether you realize it or not. So keep on praying. Keep on fasting. Keep on believing God. Keep on reaching for God. When you're driving down the road, call on the name of the Lord. Hey, and when you, when you have you ever, let me give you something. Whenever you send your bills in. 
Sometimes I put a smiley face on my bill. I don't know who's opening that letter. I don't know where it's been opened in uh, Okinawa or, <laughs> or, or, or if it's open just down the street. Or a note, Jesus loves you. And you it, it's your property when you say, can't you do that? Can't we look for ways to try to encourage people? We've got, we've got to, and that's what I said earlier about my character, brother. I somehow, I've got to let God get a hold of me. How can, I, how can I walk in the midst of a people and then just feel the presence of God? Just feel the presence of God. Not necessarily to, to get them down and shake them and pray for them right then, but they can feel something different. They can feel the peace and the love of God. How, 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 how can I get there? There's a recipe. There's a recipe. The gospel is a passageway into eternal life. It's the power of God into salvation to everyone that believeth. To the Jews, to the Greek. The gospel, the gospel, the good news. The good news. Sometimes we've got to profess it. Sometimes we can just live it, and they can see a difference. There is a recipe to salvation, and without all the ingredients, we end up with a messed up life. There's a famous little, if I called the name, many of you would know it, little restaurant in this West Tennessee, shall I say it that way, and they're famous for, for their hamburgers have won several state awards and maybe even some national awards because of their hamburgers. Well, years ago, I'm talking 30, 35 years ago or more, uh, I was around a cook that was a, a real good cook. She was, she was a mother and had children and, and had, had raised children, and, but she was a, one of those good, good old-timey old cooks, you know. <laughs> That just knew how to put the grease and the fat and the sugar. It just knew how to make it good. Uh, but anyway, she said, I, I think I found out the secret to how they make their hamburgers so good. And I said, really? So she began to go through the, the, the recipe and begin to tell me. And, 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 and I said, okay, I'm going to try that. Well, uh, the opportunity came forth, and I got to try it. And, and, and the main ingredients uh, like in a lot of recipes, was flour. They was putting flour in their meat, and some, you know. And 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 I was around with a group of men together. We were on an outing, and and and, and <clears throat> they said we're gonna have hamburgers tonight. And I said, Hey, let me make them. I know how to make them. I can make them good. I mean, like you ain't never eat before. But we had flour burgers. <laughs> They weren't the best. They weren't anything compared to what the, where I had got them before. <laughs> but I didn't get the recipe right. And if we don't get the recipe right for salvation, if we don't put all the ingredients in, if we don't mix them all together just right, repentance, baptism in Jesus' name for the remission of sins, the infilling of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues, if we don't put those in there, we, we, don't get, we don't get it all. We get part of it. And part of it's not going to get us into heaven. We've got to have it all. We've got to have the complete recipe. We've got to put all the ingredients together. For we, we know, as Paul has stated here, and even in this first chapter of the book of Romans, that, that we go from faith, to faith. We as Holy Ghost filled folks go from battle to battle. Mountain to mountain. And we remember between each mountain there's a valley. But God says I'll be with you to the end. I'm not going to forsake you. I'm going to be with you. And, and, and there's not nobody in here that's ever been on the mountain and in the valley and back on the mountain that can't say that it didn't do them good to go through the valley. I don't like the valley. I don't like to fast. 
I don't like to do without food. But I'm not going to be what I need for God if I don't. Some things come not but by prayer and fasting. And if we're to obtain to everything that God wants us to be, if, if Zacchaeus was to obtain to everything that God wanted him to be, he had to lay some things aside. And the plate's one of them. Because when we, when we do without food, the fleshly things, we begin to feed the spiritual things. And if we don't fast and pray, I'm encouraging you, please, to start. Because what's going on here already, the momentum's here. We just, we just need some team members to jump on and to help us, to keep, keep it rolling. And, and you know how it is when a, when a, when a snowball, is, as we've seen, begins at the top of a mountain, real small. And it begins to roll toward the bottom of the hill. It just continues to get larger and larger and larger. It, and I'm saying to you is, as we begin to fast and begin to pray and to begin on the, get on the team and to be team players, it's just going to get better. There's going to be folks that drive by that are going to come in. There's, there's going to be folks that, that are online that are going to come in. And they're going to be calling on the name of Jesus. They're going to be trusting in him. They're going to be believing God. And there, for we know that the goodness of God, the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. I looked up this word goodness because I wanted to know what does it mean. Goodness in the strong concordance means oil or healing. The goodness of God comes to your heart. In old days, they would, in wounds, open wounds, they would pour the oil in. And healing would come. That is, is, I'm talking to me and I'm talking to you. Do you need some oil poured on your heart? Is there some hurt? Is there some hurt there that just can't seem to be healed? We've all been affected by different things in life. Divorce, separation of family, jobs, family leaving, abuse, drugs, bad living, not believing God. We've all been affected somehow or another by that. But God says, I can help you. God says, I've got some oil, and it's called the Holy Ghost. And he said, if you'll let me in, I'll massage that heart. I'll begin to work on that situation. I remember years ago that I was as a child, I had fallen off of a, off of a, a piece of work equipment and landed flat on my back. I had an aunt that was there close, Aunt Mary. And she said, come on up to the house. And I got there to the house and she pulled the back of my shirt up and, and she, I don't know what, it, well, I, it may not have been nothing. It but she just began to rub some kind of salve on my back. I don't know if the salve had anything to do with it, but the love that she showed. And the love that Jesus is showing to you today. He's trying to rub. He's trying to put some oil. He's trying to pour some oil in for some healing to, so you can put some things aside and you can draw closer to him. Because as long as you hold on to that hurt, as long as you hold on to that pain, as long as you hold on to that grudge, you can't get where you need to be with God. God, I'm, I ask you now, just, just, just lift our hands. I feel God. Lift, lift your hands. God, let some oil be rubbed on my heart. Holy Ghost, move on me right now, God. There's some things that I need to let go of. There's some things that I need to put behind me. There's some things that I need to reach for. 
Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, heal me, I pray. No man can come to me except the Father is in him. Draw him. God is drawing right now. God is pulling from the Holy Ghost for you to be healed and for God to touch you. The grace of God has appeared unto all men unto salvation. God's reaching for you now. It don't matter who you are. It don't matter where you come from. God's not a respecter of persons. He's desiring and seeking to see you healed, to see you moved. The old man can be passed away, and there can be a new man born. The generational curse that may be on your family, and there was one on my family, but I broke that curse. Divorce, drugs, alcohol, I broke that curse because I got the Holy Ghost, and I live for God ever since. And you can do the same. You can break that generational curse. You can stand forth as a man or a woman of God, believing God, living for God every day, and let this world see what God has done for you. By the blood of Jesus, all of this hurt can be done away with. Paul says, we got to put it behind us. we got to reach forth. we got to press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling. We press toward the mark. We have a goal that we're trying to reach. I'm trying to make heaven my home, not for me alone, but for anybody I can come in contact with that will hear the word of God. And the prize is an award that we shall receive. This is the day. There is none righteous. No, not one. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Without God and before God, we couldn't fight our way out of a wet paper bag. No. And I say wet paper bag to this group because the group, the young group, don't know what a paper bag is. They ain't never seen one. <laughs> you remember when you used to go to the grocery store and they put your groceries in a wet paper in a, in a paper sack <laughs> or in a box? Yeah. Everything's plastic today. Abraham believed God. It was counted for him for righteousness. He staggered not at the promise of God, but was strong in faith. He, the love of God can be shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Ghost, which is given to us. He's commended his love toward us. And though while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. But we can be buried with him by baptism unto his death and walk in the newness of life and be planted together in the likeness of his death. We can introduce people to Jesus if we don't walk in the flesh but in the spirit. We, we, can, we can be what God wants us to be if we'll just trust in him and believe in him in romans in romans 8 we get a a, a beautiful description of here of, of of how we should walk for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh but they that are after the spirit the things of the spirit when someone offends you is the first thought that comes through your mind i'm going to retaliate i'm going to get them back Help us pray. Help us pray. It should not be that way. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. But the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither can be. But they that are in the flesh cannot please God. So if our lives lean more to the fleshly ways, the ungodly ways, we can't please God. Is there some things we need to shun? Is there some things we need to get rid of? I'm just asking us all to examine our hearts, and I'm talking to me also. It's not, it's not, it's not a, no, no, no fingers pointed all together. Is there some things we can do without that we can draw closer to God? How, how can I have the attitude of Christ? How can I have the character of Christ? 
How can I have the manners of Christ, the words of Christ? We stated earlier, fasting and prayer. And prayer, and in prayer, in verse 26 of chapter 8 in Romans, likewise the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we, know what, we, we don't know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercessions for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercessions for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to them that, that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. There's a calling going forth. There's a reason going forth. I heard you getting in the sanctuary right now. And outside of this sanctuary, there's a reaching, there's a calling going forth. The answer is we've got to pray. And as, is, as it is written in 9 of Romans, Jacob have I loved, Esau have I hated. He loved Jacob because Jacob knew how to humble himself before him under the mighty hand of God. And to do his will. Esau was a worldly man and did what he wanted to do. Should our prayer not be every day, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I know we're in this flesh and the older I get, the, the less I sleep and the more I'm learning that what I eat before I go to bed <laughs> affects how I sleep. <laughs> and I get an amen. <laughs> so, uh, so, uh, so I was thinking this morning as I was meditating on this, I said, well, I guess something got to change. <laughs> I, I, I got to get some sleep. <laughs> but there's some things we'll get to lay aside, folks, if we're going to see the will of God done like he wants it done. I'm not talking about bigger buildings and, and, and more folks. Uh, let God's will be done in those things. Yes. Not, not, not mine or yours, but let God's will be done. Yes. But let me get to a place that I can be used. Yes, I've been used in God in this place. He's been used. They've been used. You've been used. But help me, God. To put myself in a place with you that outside these walls that I can be used of you. I mean, folks, it, it, God has got such a, such a grip on, on, on what I'm trying to say. I wish I could express it all to you. But, but even the, the, the expressions of your face. The way you, you dress, the way you act, everything about you affects that lost soul. Yeah. How, how, how? Prayer, fact, letting the Spirit help with our infirmities. Because we don't know what we should pray. But if you'll get in that prayer closet and you'll let the Holy Ghost come upon you and you'll let that Shekinah glory begin to move, wherever it is you're, you're, you pray and you begin to speak in tongues and you just begin to get lost in that. You begin to get lost in that where, where you don't, you're not conscious of time nor place nor who's around nor the, nor the volume of your voice. It doesn't matter. But when you get in that place, there's battles being fought. There's, there, there's pathways being made. There's, there's people being set up that you can minister to, that you can witness to. This is the day. This is the day. And in closing, in the, in the last, of the, uh, last uh, I want to talk in Romans in chapter 10, in verse 1. Paul addresses, brethren, my heart's desire to God for Israel that they might be saved. And, and I don't wish to change the wording or anything about it, but to, 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 to say that, that our heart's desire should be that Decatur will be saved. 
our heart's desire should be that, that Tennesseans, United States, the world should be saved. But even this day, we can, we, can, we can line up with what Paul is saying here in verse 2. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God. They have an earnest desire and a will of God. But they're not doing it according to knowledge. They're not doing it according to the word that is written down. But through you and through me, they can have knowledge. They can have understanding. They can ask questions. They can feel the presence of God as it moves on us. But in verse 8 it says, But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Which we preach. A lot of folks will jump on down to, to verse 14 and say, uh, uh, in verse 13, rather, who shall ever call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And, that, and I think that's all there is to it. And, uh, uh, but let's jump back up to what it says. By the word of faith which we preach. What did they preach? The gospel. Paul preached the gospel. The truth of God. He moved upon, the Spirit moved, the gospel moved upon Zacchaeus. And whoever you are this day, you can call on the name of the Lord, and it'll begin a process. That we know that calling on the name is just the beginning, but you must start somewhere. I called on the name years ago, and here I am today. Oh, that those around us might be saved and call on the name. Somehow, God, help us to walk, to the walk, to talk, to talk. Be like Brother Barnes, to be like Noah, to be like Abraham, to trust you, God. Every question that's asked doesn't require an immediate answer. I had a brother ask me a question earlier this week. I said, I, I don't know how to answer that. But I went home and prayed, brother, and God gave me the answer. I know, I know of older couples that people would show up on their doorstep. There were godly people. They would show up on the doorstep and they would talk to them about situations. And the folks would say, the old, the old man, the old lady, in the story that I know, just shortening it. They said, we don't know the answer right now, but if you'll wait right here, we'll be back. They went to the back room and prayed. And they came back with the answer. Now that's the kind of folks I want to be around. I believe Zacchaeus had called on the name of the Lord. And the Lord knew this. So the visitation from Jesus was more than Zacchaeus ever expected. And it would be more for you than you ever expect from Jesus. I encourage you to call on the name. And you'll see this day is the day of salvation. And it's coming to your house. If you will, and you will be better than you've ever thought you would ever be. If you'll believe on God. He will give you rest for your soul if it's troubled. He will use us, DPC, in a greater measure, in a greater way, if we'll draw nigh to him and believe on him. This is the day. This is the day. This is the hour that we need to call on the Lord as a people of God and believe God, fasting and praying, praying and letting God have control of your time of prayer. Can you lift your hands and ask God to use you, ask God to bless you, ask God to minister to your needs? Let's give the Lord and Brother Sumler a hand for teaching to us the word of the Lord today. <laughs> Amen. We can dream about it. We can plan on it. We can one day going to pursue after it. But until we actually say this is the day, it won't ever happen. It won't ever happen. You can talk about trading vehicles for months. You can research. You can look. You can dream. You can plan. But finally one day you're going to have to say, you know what, I'm going to go down there and get it today. <laughs> today. Same way with walking with God. We've got to make up our mind. Today's the day I start being committed unto his kingdom and to his work. If our ushers would make the way around, give you an opportunity to give to the kingdom of God today, uh, we would surely appreciate it. God bless you.
King's kids, come sing big and loud today. All of our King's kids, come on up here.
love our children. We've got a beautiful group of kids here at DPC. We love them, but they are kids. And I'll just tell you from Sunday's perspective, I need your help. <laughs> if you see these kids running around, steer them in the right direction and help us out here. Remember, the Decatur County School Walk is uh, today. We will be meeting at 3 o'clock at Parsons Elementary and Decaturville Elementary uh, simultaneously. So if you've got kids, go to one of those schools, meet at the, them at 3 o'clock, and then we'll be moving to University of Tennessee at Martin at 4 o'clock. We walk in the hallways and praying over them and believing that God's going to touch our kids and our students of our county. Amplify students be having a Move the Mission bake sale on Sunday night following service on September the 4th. That's next Sunday night. If you have a student in Amplify students, please uh, make something or make them make something. Keep them reminded. And if you want to just donate a cake or something to be auctioned off, and then also bring you money and, and buy something. Spend some money for the Amplify students. This is going to Move the Mission, which is a a fund that a young people donates to that provides vehicles and, and affects a lot of the things that they're involved in, youth camps and different things. They fund vehicles for missionaries, so we want to be a help for that. September the 10th is a church trip at Lambert's Cafe in Sykeston, Missouri. We're leaving here at 8 o'clock in the morning and uh, going to have a good time that day. I also want to ask your prayer for direction upon this church. We had mentioned it a few couple of months ago. We were feeling very uh, need to start a coat closet food pantry uh, for our county, for our community, and been praying for direction for that and begin to approach some people about some buildings and stuff this uh, past week, and, and God began to put us in connection with places and people that says, I've got money to donate once y'all get it going. Um, and and different and two different sources and not not that we're doing it for money but it does take money for this to operate and to do and many of you have come to me and said I want to be a help with that I want to work with that I want to do that um, but we just don't know how what when and where so we want the church this is this is for the church to do and operate in so we need your help to help us pray that God would direct us and order our steps put us in connection with the right people get us the right location and that we can be a light to and help to our community. Amen. And I want us also to be in much prayer this afternoon for the spirit of prayer. I feel an urgency in my spirit to uh, speak on these on on the spirit of prayer tonight. And we're just gonna we're gonna have some time, some deep sessions of prayer tonight. I feel unction in the Holy Ghost. I want you to come with that mindset and the spirit of prayer when you come to church tonight. Let's all stand all across this house and let's pray that God would be with us today and guide us and direct us as we make our journey back to church tonight. Lord, we need you today. We thank you for your spirit, we thank you for your presence, and we thank you for your word and your direction. Pray that you would be with us and guide us and direct us. Let the spirit of prayer be upon us today. In Jesus' name that we pray, and everybody said amen. amen. God bless you, you're dismissed. Mm -hmm.